it does take a lot of hands to raise over 100,000 kelps. That process takes about two months to get from microscopic babies to something that you can see. So we've been growing these kelps at the University of Western Australia's aquarium, the Watermans Bay facility on the Perth coastline. Two days ago we started preparing our kelps for their trip up north. We packed them very carefully in moist blankets and tubs and then packed them into our refrigerated truck which we kept at a nice cool stress-free 15 degrees for their journey up the coast. Globally, kelp forests have been in decline over the past 50 years. The rate of loss is about 2% per year at the moment, and this is actually twice as fast as we are losing our coral reefs. The scales of loss are in the order of thousands of kilometers squared every year, but most of our restoration projects are really only working at the meter squared or 100 meter squared scale. So we need to develop tools that can actually match the scale of the loss. We are currently in the UN decade of ecosystem restoration. Previously, most kelp forest restoration projects were either about establishing artificial reefs or scuba divers transplanting individual kelp plants and essentially attaching them to the reef. Green gravel was really an attempt to think outside the box and come up with a method that allowed true upscaling of kelp forest restoration efforts. Green gravel is small stones. They can be rocks or even large cobbles that you culture and you actually grow kelps on top of them. Once those kelps get to about two, three centimeters, you can drop them on the reef. And then on the reef, they'll actually grow into the full kelp forest. One of the things that we're excited about with green gravel is that you can use seaweed farming technology and even work with seaweed farming companies to develop and to actually grow a lot of the kelps that you can use in restoration. This research builds on over 20 years of work documenting the health and status of kelp forests along the West Australian coast to documenting their decline just over 10 years ago due to a marine heat wave. During that marine heat wave in 2011, we lost almost 100,000 hectares of kelp forest in the state. Our source population from Port Gregory survived the marine heat wave 10 years ago, so we're really hoping that that will enable them to survive future marine heat waves and climate change scenarios here in Kalbarri. The overall goal is that these green gravel will establish healthy kelp forests, which will then reseed the surrounding reef area. So these sites are really interesting because while the kelp has disappeared, following the 10 years since the marine heat wave, the reef has actually become dominated by smaller understory seaweeds. And we're hoping that these provide a refuge for our baby kelps as they grow up. This green gravel restoration project will attempt to restore a thousand square meters of kelp forest in Kalbai. This is one of the largest restoration attempts of kelp forest in Australia. We're hoping when we come back in the next six months to see almost fully grown kelp and a new canopy forming. And those kelps will be reproductive within a year, so that will start to seed and self-populate expanding populations along the coast. Having golden kelp in the environment really increases that habitat complexity. It enables other animals to come into the system. It's like having a very simple forest compared to an old growth forest with a really large canopy. Ultimately, it's not going to be a small group of scientists who restore kelp forests on these large areas. So it's up to us to help develop techniques and put them in the hands of people who are interested and able to upscale these techniques along the coastline. In the end, we really hope that this technique can be deployed relatively easily by throwing different substrates such as rocks off the side of the boat. The Green Gravel Action Group is an initiative we came up with at UWA. It involves 15 partners across 10 countries throughout the distribution of kelp forests. 
It's really exciting now to be part of the solution, part of trying to come up with ways that we can bring back some of these lost kelp forests and maybe even make them more resilient to future climate change.